Okay, so hopefully at this point in the show, I have already introduced the show concept to everyone, and the cast is hopefully gathered around watching the video, uh, eager to find out as much information as they can from our playwrights. So let's welcome tonight's playwright, Lauren Yee. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, no problem. Uh, and you, uh, you're in Philadelphia, you mentioned? I am in Philadelphia right now today. I think it is maybe 90, 93 degrees. Well, it's, uh, it's a little bit cooler here, so we'll send you all our cool vibes, and hopefully it'll cool off over there. Okay. Uh, you've written quite a few plays. Uh, I know uh, I saw Ching Chong Chinaman over at Impact uh, a couple years ago, which was wonderful. Uh, and I know that's been published by Samuel French now. So congratulations on that. Uh, do you find that there are any recurring themes in your plays or things that come up a lot? Yeah. Um, I think one of them that, that appears in Chung Chung Chinaman and some other plays, too, are kind of what I think of as utility characters. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, um, characters that are played by the same actor. So an actor may play two, three, four, or five different characters, but that there's some kind of through line to why this particular actor plays all these characters, other than the fact that it's cheaper. Like in Ching Chong Chinaman, you had the character of the Chinese woman who kind of plays all the different sides of like what the Asian, Asian American woman stereotype might be. Um, so I find that there's a lot of uh, doubling and tripling. Okay. I think also that the storyline isn't always linear. I, I think in my plays there's room for kind of, you know, like thought bubbles, things to kind of uh, weave their way in, that it's not necessarily naturalistic all the time. Um, that you can kind of have a daydream that turns into a scene in a play. Um, and then return back to like what the original thing was. So I think kind of a weaving of narratives sometimes is really interesting to me. Okay. Uh, and I noticed in the piece that you brought us today, uh, well, first off, what is the name of the piece? Um, I think I think the title I sent you guys it under was um, Karen Zhang. Yep, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that was that I think it came from I was sitting in the airport. And somebody was paging Karen Zhang, and Karen Zhang is not appearing. So, and I had some time to kill. So that's where it came from. Nice. Uh, and it seems to be uh, have a very uh, I don't know stylized or po poetical language to it in this first scene. Is that would you agree with that? Or yeah, I mean, I think like what I tried to do with the beginning of this play was kind of take a convention that we all know about, which is like the announcers at the airport when they're trying to page someone, um, and kind of subverting that a little bit, that, you know, it starts off as something really naturalistic and eventually becomes a little more fractured and weird. Um, you know, the announcer starts saying typical things, like, you know, the, the owner of a blue Kia, and it, you know, they begin to say more information, right. you know, about that person. So, nice. I also think I also think like character voice I really love, and having a distinctive voice for the characters, um, no matter what that might be. Okay, great. Uh, is there anything else that uh, the cast should know about this piece without giving too much away about it? Um. I think my plays can sometimes go into weird places in terms of like characters we might meet or perspectives we might see, but hopefully I like it in my plays where things that we see early on pay off towards the end. That the thing that you didn't think would pay off in the beginning of the play actually comes around and is relevant in the end, so I'm a fan of that. Okay. Uh, so little things that end up being important later, that kind of thing. Yeah. Nice. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Um, 
What's the sort of tenor of the piece? Is it do, would you categorize it as being more of a drama or a comedy or a little of both, or do you ha have a, a label such as that that would work for it? Yeah, I mean, I think hopefully it'll have a little bit of both. I think, but I think probably this piece um, goes more along the lines of something dramatic or something kind of weird um, and something under the surface. Okay, sounds good. Um, the way uh, you mentioned uh, having characters sort of double and that sort of thing, uh, do you see that in, are there specific characters in this play you see as being played by the same person, or do you see there being room for other characters that some of these people you've already listed then play? I, I mean, I think there's plenty of room for other characters to appear in the play other than the ones that you know, I came up with for the first five pages. Um, you know, I could see there's there's two characters that are announcer voices, um, kind of like the airport's PA system, and I could see them appearing in their physical selves, that it's not necessarily just an announcer voice, but maybe, um, you know, we see, we see them in some other capacity. Okay. Uh, and there's a couple people that were listed in the character list that don't actually show up in the first scene. Uh, yeah. There's Cato, uh, yeah. who uh, Greg is set to play. Can you tell us a little bit about Cato? Um, in my mind, I think I think that Cato is probably uh, the title character, Karen's son, uh, Karen and Jim's son. Um, I also imagine that maybe he might be dealing with you know, his mother being on flights all the time um, and kind of concerns over safety and, you know, air travel might be important. We'll see. <laughs> nice. Uh, and the other one is the owner of the blue four-door Kia, who uh, Aaron yeah. is going to play. Uh, is there anything he should know about that? Um, I, th I think the owner of a blue four-door Kia. I don't, I don't know too much about this character yet. Um, I, I think that, you know, the clue may be about what kind of car he drives and how he came to that decision to own a blue Ford or Kia and who he might be waiting for. <laughs> um, and somehow I think he may intersect with, uh, with Karen's life in okay. some way. Great. Uh, is there anything that, uh, you know, we need to know about Karen, Miriam, or Jim? You know, the actors should know about them before we get going? Um, I think Miriam's a bad driver. I think she's a terrible driver. And I, and I think trying to get, like, to get through SFO and always pick up people, you know, has been kind of like a life hazard. <laughs> um, and, and I think maybe just kind of how... Air travel has become more a more fraught experience in recent years. Might be interesting to kind of look at because I I was just telling someone today I remember the time when I could go through airport security and get to the gate and like pick someone up, and that is that is a thing of the past. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that too. Uh, the setting of this first scene it opens at the airport. Is there anything that should get set up on stage or anything like that? Um, I don't. I don't know about set up on stage. I think um, maybe rolling suitcases might be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of in that there was a time when you actually had to like lift and carry your suitcases or get someone else to do it for you. But nowadays, um, you know, every, everyone can just roll it on. Right. Nice. Uh, and then one last question: uh, Is there anything that you? think that, or that you believe that live theater can do that other forms of entertainment can't do? I, I think live theater can sell you on the concept that, um, that kind of dream, like dreams and ghosts and kind of the things at the, uh, at the margins of our world can exist. Um, like every time I've seen ghosts in movies, it's just like, I don't believe it. Um, but if you tell me like a toaster can talk, in a play, I will I will totally buy in to the magic of that, um, and that's that's what I think is awesome about live theater. Great. Well, thank you very much, and uh, the actors will now 
get ready to go, and uh, the show will start. And I'll turn it over to myself standing in the theater. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, I hope it, I hope it goes well. I'll, I'll, I'll see it. I think on DVD. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Alan. You're welcome. Do you have any other questions or anything like that before we get? I don't know. Before we hang out. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Um, have fun, actors. <laughs>